horrific carjacking ends in an accident that nearly took a valley man's life. What happened and why car thefts are on the rise. Police say they could prove that William Rundle killed his wife. Tonight they say they might be able to connect him with a second relative's death. And plans to take over the ailing Aladdin Hotel by a company already in trouble. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is next. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News, the news leader. A crash ended an early morning hijacker, uh, hijack, carjacking in a high-speed police chase. It started at Eastern and Sahara and ended at the airport tunnel on-ramp to I-215. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Police say the whole thing started when a 15-year-old boy carjacked a 72-year-old man at a grocery store parking lot. The suspect got in and took off with the man still in the car. But about a mile down the road, the suspect let him out. That's when the high-speed chase with police started. Metro officer Travis Cord was right behind the suspect when he crashed the car near the airport connector tunnel. We got speeds of 110 miles an hour down Maryland Parkway in pursuit of the vehicle. And at which time he went into the airport connector tunnel and at which time he lost control of the car and it rolled approximately six times. Amazing, amazing, absolutely amazing. Was it rolling sideways? It rolled sideways at first and then rolled end over end. Actually in the air, at one point it was completely in the air. Amazingly, the suspect driver had only minor injuries. The owner of the car was not hurt. He came to the scene of the crash to get personal items from his car and thanked officers for helping save his life. The 15-year-old suspect was treated at UMC and released to police custody. Officers say he faces a number of possible charges, including kidnapping and armed robbery. Not all these car thefts are that dramatic, but car thefts happen all the time. Nevada ranks third in the nation for auto thefts behind lonely Washington, D.C. and Arizona. Arizona. And with the holidays coming, things may get worse. Eyewitness News is live. Renata Troiani joins us with that story. Renata. Gary, police across the valley are getting prepared. They say there will be more thefts, there will be more robberies of all kinds. It's the season. I like to think that it's the holidays and everybody's in that kind of spirit. And... But police officers across the valley say the holidays bring an increase in robberies and thefts of all kinds. More people are out. The last thing on their minds is robbery. Coupled because those people are out buying things, you know, bad guys look at that and they know there's more stuff out there to be had usually. So, you know, it's kind of, it, it ups the opportunities. We went to a local department store to find out if people are putting themselves at risk. I approached two women having a conversation in a car with the doors open. I stood with an arm's reach for about 45 seconds before I was noticed. Hello. <laughs> if you had been a man, I'd have been very frightened. But when I turned, I saw you a female. And but it would have been enough time for any criminal to do harm. I'm usually very careful. I don't even roll down my windows when somebody asks me something. You know? It's something mall security sees all the time, specifically around the holidays. Shoppers' arms are full of packages. Many are on their cell phones. People will leave their belongings um, out. They'll leave their vehicle unlocked. They'll leave the doors open. They'll leave their engines running. Ilsa, for one. I'll never sit with the car door open again. Says she's learned her lesson. Now, uh, there are some things that you can do to protect yourself. Joining me now is Steve Fouquet. He is a crime prevention specialist with Metro's Northeast Area Command. Let's talk about carjackings. Where do they happen? Where should people be aware of them? A lot of times carjackings take place when you come up to a stop sign or a street light, something where you come up and you have to stop and you're momentarily immobile. What happens is somebody will come up to the car, you know, try to open the door if your window's down. So the idea is to always drive with your car doors locked and your windows up. That's another thing. People wouldn't think you should lock your car doors because you could get out quicker. That's right, but you should have them locked. It's like when you come in a parking lot from shopping and you're walking in the mall parking lot. You want to make sure that as soon as you get into your vehicle, your packages away that you lock the doors that's the first thing you do is lock the doors and when you're coming back from shopping real quickly what should you do as soon as you get to your car as soon as you get to your car as you're walking up to your car scan the area in other words be aware take a look around is anything out of the ordinary if something looks strange is one of the windows in your car broken is there somebody in your car take a look around very quickly you should have the key in your hand or your clicker open up the door get in secure yourself 
thank you very much for joining us. Great information, and if you need any more information, need more tips, you can log on to our website at KLASTV.com. Renata Troiani, Channel 8 Eyewitness News, live. All right, Renata, thank you. Some good advice there. A car went crashing through a local restaurant this afternoon and sent two people to the hospital. The noon incident was actually the second such calamity at the Skillet Cafe on the corner of Valley View in Charleston. Fire officials say the white car in the window had been rear-ended on the street. The driver lost control and plowed into the dining area. This is the second time in as many weeks a car has crashed into the Skillet restaurant. People who worked nearby could not believe their eyes. It's the second time in about a week that this has occurred, and we just couldn't even believe that it was happening again. All but two people involved in the accident have been treated and released. The driver who caused the accident is listed in fair condition at UMC. We'll have more on this story at 11. Metro homicide detectives are gathering more evidence against a murder suspect. 56-year-old William Rundle is already charged with killing his wife, Shirley. Now police are collecting clues in his mother's mysterious disappearance. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live. Cindy Caesar is at the Rundle home with the latest. Cindy. Well, Metro homicide detectives did go back inside the Rundle Southwest Las Vegas home today, the place where they believe that Shirley Rundle was murdered. But today they went inside to retrieve documents that they hope will lead them to William's mother. Two Metro homicide detectives and a crime scene analyst spent about an hour inside the Rundle home. This time they took photos and bank statements relating to Willa Rundle. The 87-year-old moved into her son and daughter-in-law's home in 1996. But not long after the move, William told people that his mother was in Europe. Police have found no evidence of that. And William has been depositing his mother's Social Security checks for years. I think money is, is the main motive. Uh, I believe he was a, a gambler, uh, and I think uh, there may have been some... Uh, problems with the relationship, but I think the main motivator was, was money. Last week, prosecutors said that Rundle's motive for murdering his wife, Shirley, was money. Now a grand jury proceeding will determine if Rundle will be charged in any crime relating to his mother's mysterious disappearance. So that's another thing I'm waiting for. I don't know if they're even going to find out anything about her, which I do hope that they find something. Finding more evidence would also help family members understand how William Rundle led a good life, but may be capable of murder. And while this investigation continues, William Rundle is expected to be back in court tomorrow morning to enter a plea in his wife's murder. Cindy Caesar, Channel 8 Eyewitness News Live. Thank you, Cindy. A man walked into his home and found his wife held hostage by a robber. The maid had been pistol whipped. Police say the home invasion happened in an expensive home near Buffalo and Sahara. The homeowner, Dwight Persinger, stumbled upon the robber and called police as the suspect ran away. But I have, to, I have to, to compliment the owner of the house on this one. By getting out, the suspect knew that he'd been compromised, and he left right away, too. And he, he, by throwing himself in there, he'd just become another hostage. Police believe the home was targeted. The maid is recovering at Summerlin Hospital, and Persinger's wife escaped unharmed. Police are still looking for the suspect, a six-foot-two black male in his early 20s with a thin build. Once again, it took place near Sahara and Buffalo. The bankrupt Aladdin Hotel could be getting some help from a chain of themed restaurants. Channel 8 Eyewitness News reporter Eric Levine has more on a plan that could bring Planet Hollywood to the resort's rescue. It's in bankruptcy, but the Aladdin is still attractive to tourists who are willing to venture inside. I really like it in there. I like the shops that they have. Um, I like the whole Aladdin theme, the, the way the shops are, the whole theme of the, the place. But we did notice that there weren't a lot of people in there. For the past year, the Aladdin's owners have been trying to sell the property. According to published reports, Planet Hollywood may be tied in with a new ownership group. Planet Hollywood would lend it concept in marketing to the property, while another company like casino operators Pinnacle or Colony would provide the cash. Tony Villegas of California would like to see Hollywood-style attractions here in Vegas. I'm from California. That's where everything's at. Hollywood <laughs> out there. You know, it's a lot, I, I love the movies and uh, to go there and see that out 
in a different area other than California is kind of interesting. So what is Aladdin saying about all this? Well, so far, not much. Executives declined our request for an on-camera interview, but media representatives for the company tell us that all offers are still being considered. Meanwhile, gaming experts tell Channel 8 new ownership and financing is key. It's a beautiful property. It needs redesign. It needs some people with deep pockets to promote it. It would be wonderful if we could find an owner that has deep pockets that could do some good things. That's the type of magic Aladdin's creditors could only hope for. Eric Levine, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. Nobody from Planet Hollywood would comment today. The Aladdin is currently making enough money to pay its operating expenses, but it is still not able to make payments on the mortgage on the building. The Culinary Union is getting behind a business tax proposal, and now the union is trying to make sure Valley parents are behind the plan as well. Today, the union launched a campaign to get parents to support the proposed business tax. Union leaders handed out pamphlets to parents and pencils to their kids at a local elementary school. We think it's very, very important to talk to all levels of uh, this community about the need to have a broad-based business tax in order to fund our public education. And this is a good example of it today. The business tax proposal is part of an effort to get the state out of its current budget crisis. Let's check in with Victor Woodall, who is live in Chopper 8, over 95 northbound near Rancho. Victor, what's happening? Well, we've had high traffic volumes all over the valley this afternoon and to, into the evening commute. We'll start first with 95 northbound near Rancho. We've got a traffic trouble spot working there. We've got a lane restriction here. It's coming right out of the uh, Spaghetti Bowl, folks, so if you're headed out and about, this will be a while, so just be advised there's a lane restriction around the Rancho exit. Otherwise, northbound 15 and southbound 15 are very heavy, especially coming from the south, probably from California, most likely because of the holiday coming up. That's your eye on traffic for now from Chopper A. Victor Woodall, Channel 8, Eyewitness News Live. Thanks, Victor. Well, teenagers are our future. Many teens complain that nobody listens to them. Well, today, hundreds of Valley teenagers had their chance to let adults know what's important to them. Channel 8 Eyewitness News anchor Colleen May tells us about the Sun Youth Forum. 47 years ago, there were just 96 students participating in the Sun Youth Forum. Today, more than 1,000 high schoolers took part. I think it's important that we have an outlet because as teenagers, we do have things to say and we do have issues. In small groups moderated by community leaders, the high school juniors and seniors spoke their mind on issues like Iraq. Uh, ought we to bring our uh, military and economic forces back home? I really do personally feel that we just we should just leave Iraq alone. Um, it's it seemed to be a pattern that when we interfere with somebody, there are reprisals. We are informed and we do have like a really strong opinion. And it's really important that we know what we want because like the big impact of the whole war, that's gonna like impact us. We're the next generation. Like we're the ones that are gonna be feeling the effects. They also discussed law and crime matters like gun control. I do uh, agree that people should have them to be able to protect themselves, but at the same time, I don't because they have the, they can hurt themselves, they can hurt other people. And these teens also talked about challenges facing Nevada like education. Do you all think that having a high school education today and nothing more than a high school education prepares you for your future? Because our state has such a high dropout rate, it makes me want to succeed more in school just to prove that wrong, to prove the statistics wrong. The discussions don't end here. The students spent the day taking notes and will share what they learned with their peers and the public. While these teens did have opposing viewpoints, there's one thing most agreed on. Caring about the future and what's going on will make a difference. Colleen May, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. Very bright kids. Each high school selects juniors and seniors to attend. Most of the students are from government and social studies classes. A lot of hope for the future in yeah, that. Yeah, there is. I did that a few years, and they're, they're really fantastic. Wonderful kids. It's good Just to see. Great kids. Batteries are not included, but needed for dozens of toys. Up next, consumer editor Michael Geeser shows us which electronic toys are the best bet this holiday. And later in this hour, see what the Valley's new district attorney is doing to try to stop Internet crime. But first, Kevin Jennison joins us live with a first look at neighborhood weather. Kevin? Hey, Paul and Gary, we're live out here at Wolf Elementary along with some of our fine so We'll talk to some of them, talk about our brand new neighborhood weather station here, and most importantly, have the Thanksgiving and holiday weekend forecast along with the next seven days. That's just a few minutes away. Eyewitness News will be right back. 
You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News at 6 with Paula Francis, Gary Waddell, Neighborhood Weather with Kevin Jennison, and Sports with Dave McCann. Channel 8 Eyewitness News, the news leader. Here are today's Watch 8 to Win winning numbers. If your numbers match, you have eight minutes to call and win. If you'd like to play, log on to KLASTV.com. Two-thirds of the 7,000 toys in this year's toy test require, you guessed it, batteries. That's something to keep in mind when you budget for your shopping this year. And and I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, Gary. And your site consumer editor, Michael Geeser, is here with more of our toy test. Look at this. Yeah, batteries are what make these toys go. They really are. Oh, and yeah. That's why Energizer, the official battery of the Great American Toy Test, gave our daycare and after-school centers enough batteries to power every toy we dropped off. A welcome addition to this year's test. Baby Annabelle from Zaff Creations is the American version of England's most popular interactive and motion sensitive doll. Made to look and feel real, Baby Annabelle is for children three and up. She has real life baby like functions that allow her to cry, babble happily, make sleeping and burping sounds, suck on and reject her bottle, and move her eyes and mouth much like a real baby. Baby Annabelle from Zaff Creations is $50 for kids three and up. This is the adorable Dancing Dora, the bilingual TV star from Fisher Price for little ones two and up. Press her shoelace and Dora twists her waist and moves her arms as she dances, talks and sings We Did It from her popular TV show. Hola. And she says phrases and teaches counting in English and Spanish. Dancing Dora, Fisher Price for kids two and up is $30. Also from Fisher Price, he's back. Come on, everybody. Let's do this. But this time, Elmo's not tickled pink. He's dressed in a chicken suit. Chicken dance Elmo, Fisher Price, moves his legs and flaps his arms as he sings his own version of the chicken dance song. And so did the kids. Kids 18 months and up were captivated, never got bored with Fisher Price's Chicken Dance Elmo for $20. As any parent knows, keeping a two and a half year old's attention can be tough, but this musical sorter seemed to do it for this class. It was given high marks at Variety Day School. It's from Batat for ages two and up for $22.50. Here's a note for parents. The kids at Matt Kelly's Latchkey program rated the Barbie Sing with Karaoke very high. But when we returned to see it in action, it didn't work. That's a $50 toy that didn't last a week. Yet while it worked, the kids loved it. Here's another high-tech toy, one that looks great but only earned a 51 out of 100. It's the New Jam Guitar. It's for ages seven and up, costs $24.99. But when the Las Vegas children were asked if parents should buy the toy, out of a possible 10, they gave it a ranking of three. If you have questions about the toy test and would like more information, just log on to KLASTV.com. Toys are supposed to be fun in games, but a strong warning is being issued tonight. For the 17th straight year, the U.S. Public Interest Research Group released its report, Trouble in Toyland. The group is warning shoppers to look for toys that are built well and have parts that don't come loose. They should also read warning labels and throw away plastic wrappings that could suffocate children. One emergency room doctor says parents should be warned about another danger that has nothing to do with toys. Department. Probably the most common thing we see year round are coins. A uh, child's rewarded uh, for doing something good when he's 18 months or two years old and is given a nickel or a quarter. They put it in their mouth for safekeeping. They trip, fall, and down the coin goes. One other warning the public interest group says when it comes to online toy retailers, none post the warnings that are required to appear on in store products. Mm. Something else to keep in mind if you're shopping online this season. Yes. $20 bills from now on. That's right, just bills. So, where do most of the dangers come from? Some of the things that we have talked about oh, here yeah. in the past with recalls uh, balloons, small toys where pieces can come off. All of these things are a danger to children, and the public interest research group has a warning about that and says don't buy them. Okay, mm -hmm. watch out. Yeah.
Thanks, Michael. Sure. Kevin is out at Wolf Elementary with a new weather station. Kevin. Hey, Paula, thank you very much. We are very excited to have Wolf Elementary down here in the Seven Hills neighborhood, south end of the valley in Henderson, part of the neighborhood weather network. And look at all these young men and women who came out to hang out with us. And they've been running around and, needless to say, are a little bit on the excited side. Where do they get all this energy? Okay, what is your favorite part about school? Football. Reading. Reading and math. Good stuff. All this math stuff. That's good stuff. They're going to continue to argue amongst each other. Let's show you real-time neighborhood weather. First stop right here at Wolf Elementary, where the temperature is 52 degrees. We have a light breeze, but it is adding a little bite to the air. Next stop, we'll go across the valley, and we'll go up to uh, Fitzgerald Elementary near ML King and Cary. They're coming in at 55 with a little breeze as well. Then we'll venture on over to Lamb and Owens on the east side of the valley, where it is 54. And one more stop will take us near Jones and Tropicana, where it's 55, but the wind has backed off considerably. Temperatures in other neighborhoods across town anywhere from the low to mid 50s a little breeze blowing but of course the wind has been gradually decreasing all day long outside the valley mount charleston already down to 25 down in boulder city the temperature is 52 and over in pahrump it's 49. how about those wind gusts today strongest wind gust up in the uh, northwest, up near Buffalo and Cheyenne, that one to 36 miles per hour. Other neighborhoods had gusts near 30 miles per hour. Outside the valley, Searchlight had a gust over 50. We had 40 mile per hour gusts from Prim and Laughlin. Meanwhile, highs, upper 50s to low 60s, depending on your neighborhood location. Outside the valley, 43 on the mountain, 55 at Red Rock, and out in Death Valley, it was 74. At McCarran, top temperature today was 61, one degree below normal. That morning low felt colder, uh, but it was 48. It was, it was cool. Enough, but with the wind blowing, it felt even colder than that. On the satellite picture, we've got some clouds that zipped on through rather quickly. That moisture in Arizona, that's still the same system that kicked up the wind. It's far enough away now that we expect the winds to continue to die down. Next weather concern or interest will be out in the Pacific. That mass of cloudiness will come on in here after Thanksgiving and give us possibly a few sprinkles. We're not looking for much rain out of that and maybe a few breezes, but not as windy as what we already experienced. Clear in 42 degrees tonight. Should see the wind stay below 15 miles per hour. Same story tomorrow. Plenty of sunshine, a high of 62. The wind more in the 5 to 10 mile per hour range by afternoon. And a look ahead at your seven-day forecast. Thanksgiving will be great. Plenty of sunshine, light winds, a high in the mid-60s. We will notice a few clouds coming in by late Friday. And then by Saturday, a chance for sprinkles, maybe a few breezes. Again, at this point, it does not look like any significant rain. We'll keep those temperatures in the 60s during the day with overnight lows generally in the 40s. And we have so many wonderful guests here with us. Rachel so what was going on earlier? You were chasing all these boys around. What, what were you playing? Chase the boys around. Well, what were you guys playing? Chase the boys around. That one is so funny. You told me you were playing kissy face. Is that true? Yes. <laughs> what did you tell these girls that all say that you? That's really something you guys will do when you get older. That is the truth. Rachel, how old are you? Seven. Oh my gosh, it's all going, it's, it's gone berserk down here. And we have, where did Rebecca and Jessica, they look so so nice, these sisters look so nice. And, and how old is your sister? Uh, seven. Seven, but just five fingers. It's great to see you guys and everybody else who has come out. Thank you very much for your hospitality. And before we go, we have this young lady back here. What happens when you call 118? Um, you hear, hi, my name is Kevin Jemison with the Slint Channel 8 Neighborhood Welling, brought to you by Trophy Homes, and then tell you the time and the weather. Very nice. I'm about ready to be replaced. You guys all look great. We hope you take very good care of the weather station, too. And now we'll be able to give you real-time conditions from this part of Henderson, and also you can download that information and see it on the Internet and also get it on the phone. From that note, Gary and Paula with our fine friends. And let me tell you, there's energy galore down here. We'll send it back inside to you. All <laughs> kinds of amazing things, Kevin. Yeah, we're learning a lot, aren't we? Well, aren't we, though? Yeah. Age seven. Yeah. Really a cute oh. group. That they are. Thanks, Thanks Kevin. Okay. Cyber crime is one of the fastest growing areas of crime tonight. See what the Valley's new district attorney is doing to try to stop it. Plus in medical breakthroughs, you may think it's a simple headache, but it could be more than that. I'll show you how to tell the difference coming up. I'm Dave McCann. The Runner Rebels get back to work tomorrow against UAB. Starting guard Demetrius Hunter sat out of practice tonight. I'll tell you about his status for Wednesday. 
And our Las Vegas resident and former heavyweight champion Mike Tyson says he's ready to fight once again. Sports is next here on Channel 8. Charlie Spoonhauer has had a lot of run-ins with UAB over the years, and tomorrow he'll get another. The Runner Rebels host the Blazers at the Thomas and Mack Center, and UAB, it's going to be a very good test. Yeah, it's going to be a, um, you know, a real good uh, challenge for our team. You know, uh, we just have to, um, you know, just come out and just play as hard as we can. You know, and just be smart and just take care of the ball, and you know, good things to happen for us. UAB will be a good challenge for them. Yeah, they will. So. Uh, to, for a Cowboy team coming in, you know that they're going to be attacking, and you really have to be on your best game and probably get a victory. Then that should really get a lot of those bugs out. And we just want to come out and improve from last game. I mean, we want to try to eliminate the periods in the game last where we uh, went through spurts where we didn't score. And I think we also want to come out and just play D because they got pretty good guard play. You think your guys have a sense of what's coming? Or no, is it gonna be no, 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 no. We've showed the tape. You know UAB. We've showed the tape, and I know. I mean, I've been there. Yeah. I've been there. But uh, until it, until it bites you, you don't know. You you think that that old puppy looks friendly until he gnaws about to your elbow, and then you find out he bites. <laughs> Coach says Demetrius Hunter was held out of practice today in hopes that he'll be ready for tomorrow's game. Hunter is suffering from a strained right calf muscle. If he can't go, Ernest Turner will start in his place. Mike Tyson's in a good mood and in a good suit, two things we don't often see. Tyson's in Tennessee to announce his February 22nd fight with Clifford Ettini, and they did that today. I'm getting disciplined, I'm working hard, I'm just going to just work back hard and try to train hard and, and do well. I want to do well, I want to win, you know what I mean? I just want to win. I have a lot of money at times, I just want to win. A lot of people that just think that, you know, Mike just can't be, you know, he can't be beat, he's going to always be at the top. I mean, sometimes it's time for the old out with the old in with the new, you know what I'm saying? Maybe a teeny didn't watch the Tyson Lewis fight, because Tyson can be beaten. Just not by a teeny. We'll hear more from Tyson coming up later in the hour. This isn't a title fight either, but it's still worth watching. And we're happy to have it live on Channel 8, UNLV's football finale at Colorado State, Saturday at high noon. Schedule that in with a turkey sandwich. All right. I'll do it. All Thanks, right. Dave. You Thanks, bet. Dave. There's more news straight ahead on Channel 8 Eyewitness News live at 6.30. Stopping cybercrime. That's the goal of the new district attorney. We'll show you what he's doing to keep your identity safe. Plus, new details about a horrific valley murder and the penalty the suspects could face. And solving a problem requires knowing what's wrong. Tonight I'll show you how to know what could be behind your headaches. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News at 6.30 with Paula Francis, Gary Waddell, Neighborhood Weather with Kevin Jennison, and Sports with Dave McCann. Channel 8 Eyewitness News, the news leader. Federal authorities have broken up the largest identification theft ring in U.S. history. Now, Clark County's District Attorney's Office is cracking down on cybercrime. Good evening. Thanks for staying with us. A growing number of criminals are using the Internet to rob people. Experts estimate 750,000 people are victimized every year. And guess what? It's worse at this time of the year. Channel 8 Eyewitness News anchor Lisa Johnson reports. Imagine going to the ATM only to find out your bank account is empty. It's a bank robbery committed, not with a gun, but with a computer. Identity theft is one of the major crimes that uh, we see today. That's why District Attorney-elect David Roger will be starting up a cyber crime unit in January. It's going to be important for us to be on the cutting edge of crime prevention and cr criminal prosecution. Authorities say stolen identity theft increases this time of year. Holiday shoppers are using checks and credit cards with wild abandon and not paying careful attention. No, but they live here. John Lindell here and his fiance are shopping for wedding rings for Christmas. Security is not at the top of their minds. Usually use credit cards and not worry about it. But shoppers should worry, making sure no one sees their card numbers or receipts. Merchants also must take extra care to check IDs and secure checks and credit card receipts immediately. With all the people coming through this state, day to day, we have to be very careful with that. To prevent a cyber criminal from swiping your identity when shopping, Roger recommends using secured sites on the internet and don't carry or give out your social security number. Uh, once the perpetrator gets that social security number, your financial uh, history is, is gone 
uh, it'll never come back. These days, shoppers need not just fear pickpockets, but cyber criminals who can steal not only your cash, but your entire financial security. Lisa Johnson, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. The DA's office also recommends that we get copies of our credit report a few times a year just to make sure that somebody is not using our name for an account. For more information on how to protect yourself from cybercrime and to identify theft, you can go to our website, klastv.com. The Mirage Hotel Casino will pay out more than a million dollars to settle a race, race discrimination lawsuit. The money will go to black and Hispanic job applicants the company allegedly discriminated against from 1996 to May 97. The Mirage is also required to implement new training, record keeping, and complaint procedures. The Mirage says it now has a diversity program in place. A new report gives new details about a Valley murder. Anthony Prentice and James Harrison are accused of killing driving instructor Dan Miller. The report says the two teens stabbed Miller 128 times all over his body, including his head. The victim had taken Prentice under his wing to help him after he was released from a juvenile facility. Prentice and Harrison are set to face trial in June. Nevada Power is doing its part for the environment. The utility has reached contracts to acquire more power from renewable energy suppliers. The company is required to do that by law. The power will come from wind generation and geothermal resources. The Public Utilities Commission, though, still has to approve those contracts. Some Southern Nevada inmates are giving back to the community. Prisoners at the Southern Nevada Women's Correctional Facility made about 60 blankets for new babies at Lake Mead Hospital. They also made hats, booties, scarves, and mittens. The inmates chose Lake Mead Hospital because many pregnant prisoners have their babies there. 18 inmates worked together on on the project. A lot of the women know how to do this and the women who are there teach uh, other women how to do them. So, so they all work together. Um, as a matter of fact, we just didn't have enough yarn, but we had uh, way more women interested in helping uh, with this project. Lake Mead Hospital officials say the blankets really help the many patients who may not be able to afford them. The hospital also provides other supplies and educational materials to help new parents. How nice. Mm -hmm. The president has signed a bill he hopes will boost big construction projects. Here's the latest on tonight's top national stories. The projects have been lagging because insurance companies wouldn't cover damage to them in the event of a terrorist attack. Insurance companies say they couldn't afford to insure the projects. Under the new terrorism insurance bill, the government would absorb most of the costs. UN weapons inspectors in Iraq have more effective tools this time around to find what they're looking for. 17-member team has radar equipment that can detect underground facilities as well as send video and satellite images instantly to the United Nations. Iraqi officials deny there are any weapons of mass destruction in the country, and they have until December 8th, though, to show proof of that. If they want to be believed, they had better provide either the weapons if they remain or better accounts. They have their budgets, they have the archives, they have the reports of individuals. We do not. The White House says the world is waiting to see if Iraq lives up to its promise of unfettered access to inspectors. Santa Ana winds are wreaking havoc in California, tearing down billboards, trees, and more. The fierce winds have also sparked fires in Sierra Nevada and caused power outages, affecting more than 50,000 people. While some say the cost of the cleanup will put a damper on their holiday spending, they say they're thankful to be alive. <laughs> some tenacious headaches have a way of sticking around no matter what you do. Coming up on Channel 8 Eyewitness News, live at 6.30, in our special report on headaches, I'll have tips for dealing with the headaches that medicine can't cure. Plus, in Aid Online, the tools available on the internet to help you cook up plenty of holiday enjoyment. And things have cooled off quickly in the Valley. Kevin Janison will be along to tell us just how much more things will cool off. Attention headache has ruined many a Thanksgiving dinner, but they usually subside by the time guests leave. Some headaches, however, refuse to yield, and they can cause a lot of suffering. That's in tonight's Medical Breakthroughs report. Las Vegas resident Jeanette Kendrick will never take pain-free living for granted after a lengthy struggle with major headaches. If you haven't ever had a migraine headache, it's hard to describe the feeling. Mine would start in the shoulder area and gradually creep towards the front of my head. And it's just a 
continual pounding. Jeanette's painful migraines were possibly linked to a broken arm she suffered prior to the onset of the headaches. But headaches cannot be measured or mapped out, and only through a careful review of a patient's history can a cause be determined. If there is other neurological symptoms with the headaches, such as weakness, visual loss, unsteadiness, falling, or if the headache is gradually getting worse over time. Most headaches come and go without the need for medical attention, but there may be a more serious underlying problem. You should consult a doctor if the pain is sudden and severe and associated with a stiff neck, or if it's accompanied by fever and persists for several days. It's best to treat it right away. Most of the time, people wait thinking that the pain is going to go away or it's a mild headache, I'm not going to take anything for it until it becomes very intense. Um, I felt lightheaded, I felt out of body sometimes. I mean, that's how bad the pain was and we just reached the point that I had to go to see a physician and that's when I went to the headache specialist. After five days in the hospital, Jeanette's headaches finally subsided. My family, after I got out of the hospital, has said to me repeatedly that they were so glad to have the old Jeanette back because apparently when I had the headaches I was not myself. Headaches are classified according to the location and duration of the pain. Treatments can range from mild to aggressive depending on the severity. Remember, before you see your doctor for a headache, try to write up your own history of when, where, and under what circumstances you get headaches. We have more information available at our website, klastv.com. A new treatment is being developed for very young victims of a rare disease. The disease is called San Filippo syndrome. Yeah. It's a genetic condition in which a child is missing an enzyme crucial for developing vital organs, including the brain. Children with the condition usually don't survive past the early teen years. Doctors are now using umbilical cord blood donated from a newborn to get the cells the patients need to produce the missing enzyme. So far, though, this new treatment has been used on only a handful of children. Doctors are hopeful, but they say a cure is not guaranteed. We really can't say yet. It's too soon. Um, we, we've not seen anything discouraging, and we have some hints that um, um, we have some encouraging results. It could take years for doctors to know if the transplants worked for the children. In tonight's 8 Online, you won't find cables or internet connections in one UNLV building, but the students will still be online. The TAM Alumni Center is going wireless. Using laptops, students can email and access the same internet data available in other campus computer labs. UNLV officials hope the project will one day lead to an entire wireless network on campus. Prepaid cards aren't just for long distance and cell phones anymore. America Online is offering prepaid cards for internet service. 500 minutes of web surfing will cost about $15. The card does run out, however, after 90 days. They're being sold at Target stores and at Western Union outlets. You can find help with your Thanksgiving preparations online. Retailers are seeing an increase in business from people who decide to bag cooking and order turkeys or entire Thanksgiving meals online and have them delivered. House and home websites will see more traffic during the holidays from people who do the cooking or just want to get it right. If it's like 3 o'clock in the morning and it's my first Thanksgiving and I've woken up and I've thought, I forgot to take those weird things that are wrapped in wax paper out of the bird. What's going to happen? You could, you could log on and find it. You don't have to call your mom and wake her up and ask her. <laughs> yeah, well, we should, we should answer that question. You take them out. <laughs> you can also use an online roasting calculator to help ensure success. And that is tonight's Happy Thanksgiving Early Eight Online. <laughs> oh, that's great. Residents of a downtown Las Vegas neighborhood say the area looks like a ghost town, and they blame parking meters. The city installed 22 meters on 7th Street north of Bonneville, which is designated an historic area. The machines went in a few months ago, and now almost no one parks on either side of the street. Instead, cars cram into the surrounding blocks that don't have parking meters. Property owners say so few people are putting money into the meters that it couldn't possibly cover the cost of sending someone out to collect. Well, the thinking is that when the feds put in the uh, courthouse here, since they didn't put in a parking garage, that everybody using the courthouse would just park in the neighborhoods and feed these machines and they were going to make all this money. Well, nobody used it. All they did was they simply took away 
parking rights from people who've been here forever. City officials say the meters weren't supposed to make money, but only to manage the parking situation on 7th. Have the meters just made it worse? Tonight at 11, George Knapp of the I-Team takes an in-depth look at the story. Mm, very good. Kevin is out at Wolf Elementary School, the home of uh, some precocious kids on our newest weather station. Kevin. Very, very well put, Gary. It's a little <laughs> cool out here. We have Jared here, and, and Jared, you are demonstrating the latest in burlap, right? Yeah. Are you warm? No. <laughs> it's a little cool. We're just a bunch of spoiled people here. Temperatures are in the 50s. The rest of the country would love to have the 50s at the end of November. And here we are, a little cool. And, and what's your name? Olivia. And Olivia, you just moved here from? Oklahoma. What do you think it's like in Oklahoma right now? Cold and yeah. snowing. They get a few tornadoes, don't they? Yeah. Did you know we've had tornadoes here in Las Vegas? <laughs> no. We have. March of 92 and September of 98. We can remember them. We've only had two. That's <laughs> it. That's how seldom we get tornadoes. They were very small. Not like what you get in Oklahoma. We're very proud to be hanging out with all these kids. That's right, baby tornadoes. We're very proud to be hanging out with all these kids. We've got a brand new weather station right here at Wolf Elementary. Let me show you real time neighborhood weather from here. It's 52 degrees in Seven Hills, south end of Henderson, and the breeze has backed off big time. Humidity at 21%. We'll head up toward ML King and Kerry. They're at 55 right now with 19% relative humidity. Over on the east side of town at Manny Cortez Elementary is 53. And near Jones and Tropicana, current temperature is 55 degrees. Other temperatures in neighborhoods across the valley. Some areas dipping down into the upper 40s, including Windmill and Paradise and also at the zoo on North Rancho. Outside the valley, the mountain's holding at 25. It's also in the mid-20s up at Bryan Head, Utah. In Mesquite, it's down to the upper 40s and Pahrump is coming in in the mid-40s. Meanwhile, high temperature in McCarran today was 61. The morning low was 48. Even though it felt colder than that, the friction of the air kept the temperature up a little bit. And on the satellite picture, We've got some high clouds that zip through pretty quickly. We should stay clear overnight and then focus our attention on what's going on out in the Pacific as the next system gets a little better organized. And as it does, those clouds will move in late into Thanksgiving weekend and give us a couple of sprinkles, but most of the rain should stay a little farther to the east. Here comes your forecast. First for tonight, clear 42 degrees for the low temperature. Then tomorrow, plenty of sunshine. Expect a high temperature to reach 62 and a much calmer northeasterly breeze. A look ahead at the seven-day forecast. We are looking for temperatures. Thanksgiving is going to be great. Mid-60s, lots of sunshine. A few clouds roll in late Friday. Slight chance for sprinkles on Saturday. Again, most of the rain will be a little farther to the east, and we'll keep the highs at least 60 degrees with morning lows down around 40. You know, with the Neighborhood Weather Network, you can go online at KLASTV.com and check out the conditions around the clock. You can also download the weather bug. Hey, that is some good waving over there. You can also download the, waver, the weather bug and keep the temperature from the weather station nearest you in the bottom right corner next to the clock on the gray taskbar on your computer. And of course, you can dial 118 to get the weather from the neighborhood nearest you. It has been such a pleasure to meet all these. Who is the coolest person here? Me. Anyway. <laughs> and, and, and wait a second, how old are you? 13. How many years have you been in fifth grade? Uh, one. Oh, okay, just, just, we're just checking. Now's your chance. I said you can go wild and you can wave, scream, and go berserk Hello. from down here at Wolf Elementary, Gary and Paula. It's one way to stay warm. We'll send it back inside to you. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. I think Kevin's the coolest person here. <laughs> He'll tell you that. You bet. Oh, yeah. Mike Tyson back in the news. Yeah, and he's back in the ring. At least he's moving that way in February. Tyson has him in boxing since Lennox Lewis beat him up good in June. Well, he's digested his humble pie, and he's ready to start swinging again. We'll hear from the former champion. And in Philadelphia, it's two quarterbacks down with one more to go. Sports is next here on Channel 8. Mike Tyson says he's ready to fight once again. Lennox Lewis beat him up in June, but Tyson remains the number one topic in the heavyweight division, and he'll begin another comeback by fighting Clifford Ittini February 22nd at the Pyramid in Memphis. I take a lot of things for granted, you know what I mean, and um, took people emotionals, grant, emotions for granted, people being afraid. I took a lot of things for granted and stopped cultivating my skills, and I made easy fights, tough fights, and. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I hope I'm coming around 360, but I mean, it's feeling great. I want to knock people out again. I miss the feeling of having people on the con on the canvas and they don't, you could count to 2012 and they just got up <laughs> that morning. I just miss that feeling. I just want to do good things in my life. And I, and I feel so weird because I felt after that fight with Lennox Lewis, I felt, um, 
I felt purified after that fight. It felt like womb. If you know, I don't know if he whooped my ass and baptized me at the same time. I don't know, but I just felt clean and I'm ready to start over. <laughs> Also on the February fight card is former Olympic figure skater Tanya Harding. This will be her professional debut. We're not sure if she will do the punching or if she'll hire someone to come in and do it for her. We do know that she is a knockout specialist. Just ask Nancy Kerrigan. The battle of the sexes won't be over in April, but one thing's for sure. The 2003 Masters will be the most watched golf tournament in history. The tournament's getting unprecedented exposure, both good and bad, over its club membership policy that excludes women. Four of golf's biggest stars are in Hawaii this week at the Grand Slam of golf, but it's the Masters that everyone's talking about. Uh, my, my, my opinion's already out there. It's been out there and from a, a million different angles that uh, I've been asked. I don't see it as a huge distraction. Um, you know, I'm going to be there and I'm going to enjoy it just the same as I have every other year. <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to playing this tournament and um, playing Tigers event next and then in January preparing for the Masters. And other than that, I'm, I'm only distracted by where my golf ball is going right now. I think that uh, maybe I ought to put uh, Martha Burke and Hootie uh, in one of those celebrity boxing matches and kind of figure it out in the ring or something. I mean... Well, perhaps the winner could fight Tanya Harding. The Philadelphia Eagles will start third-string quarterback A.J. Feely this weekend against St. Louis. They lost Coy Detmer last night to a dislocated elbow. Detmer was playing for Donovan McNabb, who is out with a fractured ankle. And the season has ended for the NFL's best defensive player. Baltimore's Ray Lewis has decided to have surgery on his shoulder. He's done, and that's not necessarily bad news for every offensive player sure. in the league. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome. We'll be right back. Well, that's it for us. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tonight at 11 o'clock.